Today we've got a very interesting job. It's a sliding gate, quite a large one. And this has been combined with a single swing gate opener. So I haven't seen this set up before. So that's our single Sensys Vantage swing gate opener. The control box there, that's the single linear swing arm. So I imagine that works in conjunction, opening and closing with this sliding gate. It's had a slight knock there, but not too bad. These also have the Sensys photoelectric beams. It's got a slight bit of damage there that may or may not affect the operation. So that cover may need to be replaced. And over here on this pillar, we have the opposite beam. So these are the photon sensors beams, wireless version. I can't see there being any wires run underground here. So we'll just check that's working as well. It's about five or six years old, that battery may need replacing. Right, so let's see, this gate here is in locked mode. So we can unlock that and check that out. So the first thing I can see is that bracket attaching to the gate there. That doesn't look too good. So we definitely need to fix that up. Let's grab our key. Actually, we'll go and look at the sliding gate. So obviously that closes and sits across there. And that becomes the stopper for the sliding gate, which sits in there. Okay, so access is pretty limited, but I think we can close this gate. So under here, we can see our access panel for the manual release. Don't know if I'd want to stick my hands in there just yet. So we'll give that a good clean up as well. Let's go to the other side. Imagine if we close this gate. There's our Sensus D5 opener right there. Let's just check where these rollers are. We've got our main rollers at the top there to keep the gate from falling over. There's one wheel, and there's our other wheel, so that will just go off the edge there. So I don't think this gate has any stoppage. So that wheel probably just come off the track, I reckon. All right, so that gate's off the track now. It's not the best setup. You might need to put, oh no, it does have a stopper there, that's good. So it's got a stoppage there, but it's already off the track. But if we push any further, it does stop there. So it's not gonna fall off anywhere, but that does allow us to access the gate opener. Now this looks like it's already been cracked open and not replaced properly, so that will probably just come off. Oh, all right, that needs a good clean up. So let's see what we've got here. Beams active. All right, so on that front panel, We've got beams active. And that battery. So that battery is 0419. So that battery is six years old. I'm pretty sure that will need replacing. That could be half of our issue. Generally after five or six years, these will need a new battery. Quite inexpensive. So we've got two transformers in here. I haven't seen that either. 
double the transformers. So what's that running? There's also another gadget here. You run frequency buzzer. Okay, that's our loop sensor. So there must be a loop sensor in the ground, which right here there is, as you can see. So that's running a loop sensor in the floor here. That may be an exit or entry system. I'll have to have a look at that as well. So that would be our in-ground loop. It's a rubber coated wire. And yep, that's our loop that goes into the ground. And then we've got normally closed, common, and a positive or plus symbol. Oh, and we've got a negative as well. So we've got two power wires to power this unit. Normally closed and normally open to activate the opener, which actually goes into our pedestrian or common input. What have we got here? That's going into a common input. So normally closed and normally open. Those blue wires they're both going into the common input. All right, we'll leave that for now. Let's give this a bit of a clean up because that is crazy gross. Let's push the button actually, see if it works. Gate stalled, with, yep, the gate stalled, which means our manual release isn't engaged. Let's turn the power off. Uh-huh. Someone's put some silicon there. Shut up. Someone's put some silicon above this plug, which is a great idea. So many people turn off the opener and that kills the battery. So that's a fantastic idea. Probably need some more there. It's not holding that switch down very good. But our battery backup does work. I think we'll check that out better after. All right, let's give this motor a clean. Okay, so now we've got the gate motor all cleaned up pretty nicely for now. We'll give that a silicon spray after as well. But there's so much crap in there. That's pretty good. Let's get the gate back on the track. So there's our wheel. We'll just bump that back up. All right. 
right, so that's back on track. We'll lock our motor in. Actually, what we'll do first, let's put this into diagnostic mode. Let's see if I can get a view here for you. So hold down, got the power on, yep. Hold down this button here for two seconds. Yeah, it's a bit hard to see. I might use the uh, camera as my viewing window. So let's go scroll down. Let's go to general settings, I think. Round test button that's this little button here that you can use to operate the gate I'll leave that on diagnostic screen that's what we want to turn on so we'll turn that on what's going on okay enter now we can go back all right so there's our diagnostic screen We've got battery voltage at I think that says 15.5. Let's run the gate and we'll see what that says after. Let's lock in the manual release by winding that screw out. We'll re-engage the opener by moving that gear down there with the gate. All right, so now our gate's locked in. Let's operate the gate and see what our diagnostic screen tells us. Actually, that says 13.5. 13.5 battery, which is good because it's a 12 volt battery, you don't want it up to 15 volts. Okay, let's operate the gate and see what the battery says. Safety beam active. Okay, so that won't close because our safety beam is active. Our gate won't close because our safety beam is active and I've got a sneaking suspicion the battery in this is flat. Let's go ahead and remove the cover. So these covers pop off quite easily. This one's on a bit of an angle, but that could be the back cover. That's to line up with the other photo beam on the other side. So normally there's a little cover over the screw here that's already missing, but you can pop that off with a flathead screwdriver. That's why I had this one handy, that's already missing. And then it should be a Phillips head screw in here. Just undo the Phillips head screw. The screwdriver, yeah, it's pretty good actually. So that's the screw right there. Now this cover should just come off quite easily. And there we go, oh fantastic. So these are just double A batteries. So let's grab these, actually let's grab our multimeter. And we'll actually grab our multimeter and check these. So it's a good thing about Census, they use ready available double A batteries and they last for about five years, maybe more. All right, so we've got our multimeter here. Check these AA batteries, DC voltage. It doesn't matter which way around you go, but I like to do positive on positive and negative on negative. So these are 1.5 volt batteries. Ideally 1.6 or 1.7 means the battery is in very good as new condition. Just like your car battery, 12 volt car battery should be 12 and a half to 12.8 which is a really good fresh battery. Let's see what these read. 1.3, that battery is basically dead. One point three, that battery is basically dead as well. So these batteries are no good. Let's do the old test where you drop the battery from about an inch and if it falls over, dead 
because they actually get a bit of a bounce to them. Let's grab some new ones and I'll show you the other trick. All right, so I've got some energizers here. Let's just check the voltage. Actually, let's do the bounce test first from about an inch. Yeah, they don't bounce. This, gr this ground is a bit crap. There we go. There we go. These are a lot heavier than an empty battery, believe it or not, and you can feel the difference. So you can see that one's a bit higher. Same height. They have a double bounce and they fall over. So a quick way to test your AA batteries. Let's pop these in and see if it works. They're pretty easy, positive down. Keep the words to the front so it looks nice and neat. And then positive up, which is obviously your little nib on the top of your battery. It says positive right there as well. If you can see that, maybe. And we should get a beep and some lights come on. So that's using power now. So what I like to do is just to check the power consumption with the multimeter again, just on one battery. hand so 1.5 1.55 volts all right let's just put the cover back on and see if it works if this doesn't work we'll go check the other one with that bit of damage on the uh the eye let's go and check our gate opener we'll close it up we've got any action just wind our mechanism out there anti-clockwise lock the gate in all right i've got a sneaking suspicion a bit of damage on that photo beam maybe causing some dramas let's just pick as much as we can of that off it's not too bad let's go and see if it works now so if we push our circular button, we've got open, and we've still got PE beam active. Okay, so I think we're going to have to remove this cover and see if it works without the cover. This has got your little protective case on there. Phillips head screw. is nice and shiny a lot more protected than the other one and the cover should pop off unless it's been silicon on just a possibility okay this cover it's been stuck on let's grab the remote and we'll see if it works So we've got a flashing LED light right there. Let's just give the remote a press. So this is our cover. I'm not sure if there's a blockage with that bit of damage there. So what we'll do, we'll run an alignment technique. Let's see if that works. We're just going to run an alignment check in installer mode. Okay, I was going to run an alignment check in installer mode, but I can hear a clicking now when I block the signal. But now it's gone away. That was clicking. Okay, let's run the alignment mode. This is the receiver. There's a button on here. We hold that for a second. So 
now we've got our red LED permanently on. That means we are in alignment mode. So this one, the power is on. As you can see, there's a jumper right there. It says off and on. It's already on the on position because this has been functioning for quite some time. So now we need to replace the cover on the transmitter. So this only lasts for 120 seconds. So we'll reactivate this by pressing the installer button here for a second. So the LED is permanently on. Now we do need to replace the cover to align it. Now this LED will stay on if the beams aren't aligned. And once they are aligned to each other, that LED will go off. It'll also emit a four kilohertz tone. So let's put the cover back on. Let's see if they are aligned. All right, so we aren't getting any tone. So let's just move this around a bit as much as we can. Let's see if we can get some alignment here. These have just been stuck on by silicon. They aren't seeming to align themselves very good at all. We aren't getting a very good alignment. So basically you just wanna move this around until the red LED turns off. I might undo this one and just put them a bit closer. See what happens. Let's take this over and see if we get alignment close range. Okay, still in installer mode. So there's our tone. So they are working. Let's go back into installer mode. One press. So it does work without the covers on. I'll put them back on anyway. Pole. So I'm just going to move this around on the column like so. So this is the amount of movement we can have. So you don't get much movement at all. That's on. That's off. So we'll put our circuit board back in. We'll go back and do the installer mode. Okay, perfect. So once we align this one, so we can pull this back together now. This one's nice and secure. Put our cover back on. Put our screw in. And we'll go and align our receiver to this one. So that's nice and secure. All right, let's take our circuit board off. And this one. Fix that back into position. Put circuit board back in. Okay, we are in. We do have a bit of a flicker. 
What's with the beep? Uh-huh. There we go. Once the cover's on, we are good. That's nice and firm. Cover back on. Got our click on, click off. Is only just aligned though. We may have to move that a little bit. So now it's not working. If we come out a bit, we're back in alignment. So I might just have to put a little packer behind there, about two or three millimeters, and that would be good. All right, where's our remote? You should be able to hear that clicking. So the moment of truth. Remote. And there we go, gate is closing. And opening. So wait for our magnet to pass the motor and it will have full speed. Okay, now I'm not sure how that swing gate opens or closes. We'll see what happens when we press the button on our sliding gate. I assume that gate should close first, but it's not. So now we need to go and check that out. But our sliding gate is in operation again. But I will change that battery as well. That's getting quite old. So there's our magnet. Once that passes the motor, it knows the position of the gate and it will go full speed. Let's go and look at this swing gate. Let's see what's happening here. So we'll just open that sliding gate. And then we'll get our key. Unlock our swing gate. By this here, if you can. No, that may be for our, what is it, 097, 198. I don't find the right key. All right, so we don't have a key for this one. I think what we can do is take the pin out of this gate here. It comes out very easy, there we go, okay. That's easy. All right, let's take off this box cover and we'll see what's happening inside of this one. Get a small screwdriver, maybe. This one should be better. Okay. So these are quick release screws. Pop that cover off. that I'm a bit afraid to look at this all right there's a bunch of screws in there that's unusual so I've got a bunch of colorbond screws strange place to keep a bag of screws all right so we've got some dirt in here not a good sign Bit smelly. I've got some ants that have made a home in here. That's super smelly. That does not look very good at all. Whoa! Yeah, okay. That is, yeah, that's not good at all. Wow. That's smelly. Well, let's get our blower and blow it out and see what happens. We've still got power. Kind of. Anyway, let's see if we can clean this up. So first I'm gonna hit it with some surface spray, kill off those bugs, just lightly. A good heavy dose inside the cable gland. 
because that should be sealed from any contamination. Look at that. Wow. Look at them full. Holy crap. Wow, look at that. That is pure ants. There are thousands of them. Wow, let's just give that a bit of a blow. Dusting with surface spray. Blow it right in there. So now I'm going to see if I can crack open this cover. Oh, nice spidey there. That's a white tip. Yeah, get out of here, mate. You're not welcome. All right, so there's still some ants crawling around here. Disconnect the power charger. So I'm just gonna crack open this cover. Just disconnect the power. Too good. Oh, yes. Capacitors, I think. Let's give this a good dash with silicon spray to give it the best chance of survival. I think we might be up for a new control board. Give it a good scrub. a bit of damage on this board. Power this up and see what happens. We've got nothing on the LCD screen. Can't really do a setup without that LCD screen. But yeah, look at that damage on the board there. That's some nasty damage. So yeah, it looks like this swing gate is going to need a replacement control board. Nothing major. Bit of a shame. There's our buttons. So this button should be our operate button. So what we'll do, we'll disconnect the power again. Actually, this one might need the battery to run. So this button should operate the gate motor. 
And yeah, there's no operation at all. Doesn't even go into the menu. All right, so a new control board for this one. Actually, let's clean up the back of that. I don't think that will make much difference. Yeah, that's crazy. Nah, that's shocking, look at that. All right, new control board for our swing gate. We'll be back for part two. I'm that roller door bloke, thanks for watching.